What is aviation mastery? Mastery is a quest, not a score on a test. It's a self-perpetuating infinite game. It takes our concept of a good pilot is always learning and removes the limits you previously self-imposed. But the choice, once again, is always yours. Well, you can choose to stay inside your comfort zone, your defined limits, or you can push beyond to the safer, smarter pilot you're always meant to be. These are the principles of aviation mastery. Hey, M08 Nation, Jason Shepard here, M08.com, and I hope you're loving this Principles of Mastery series. All last month, we built the fundamentals. We built that strong foundation, and now we're able with that strong foundation to go and work further on this idea of mastery and something we're continuing to pursue in everything we do. And it starts today with our radio communications. Rather than being in the airplane, I promise we'll get back to the airplane next week, I wanna kinda of be here in the hangar, in the studio with you all, so I can share just a little bit more and a little bit deeper on radio communications. I made this big elaborate presentation that had VFR and IFR, and I, I had to cut a lot of the IFR section out of it, otherwise this would've been an hour long video. And I wanna be quick and concise and honor all your time as well. So maybe we'll save more of that for uh, the webinar at the end of the month as well, where we can dive a little deeper into some radio communications. First and foremost, we need to make sure our fundamentals, our foundation is strong when it comes to radio communications. And it comes to knowing what authority we have. We know in the FAR AIM under 91.3, it's pilot and command responsibility, right? You are always pilot in command. Tell ATC what you're gonna do. Think of it that way. Pilot and command responsibility says, I have the final authority as the safety of this flight. You have to realize that that also says, I'm, I'm in charge here. I have the power in an emergency to tell ATC what I need and how they can be of an asset to me. And so often we're so scared of, of the controllers and scared to use words like unable and, and, and just feel like we have to do everything. The controller might say, hey, turn left 10 degrees and you're a VFR only pilot, you turn left degree, 10 degrees and you're looking at a cumulonimbus cloud. Well, that controller wasn't you know, playing a joke on you. Their radars are meant to see airplanes and precipitation. They can't see clouds. It says that in AIM chapter seven. They can't see clouds on their radar. So it's your job to speak up just because they gave you this heading, that's gonna take me in conditions that are no longer VFR. 91.3, I have to speak up, unable to accept that deviation. Now, I wanna illustrate this to you, and I hate talking about aviation accidents, but I wanna illustrate this to you through in aviation accident, the M0A team has gone on to create just an, a little animation for you to get a better visual of it. And I, I want you to listen to air traffic control and listen to the pilot. But in order to make it just more realistic, I want you to put yourself in the pilot's shoes. Let's build the scenario here. Let's assume you have 332 hours total time. Uh, 303 of those hours, by the way, are in this make and model of aircraft. 250 hours of PIC time and 28 hours in the last 90 days. You're flying a Cirrus SR-20. You're departing a OUN heading to Houston's Hobby Airport. Busy class Bravo airspace, as, as you all know. And let's add to it some stressors you're flying to go see actually a family member uh, that is passing away in the hospital. So you're going there with just this emotional weight and everything else that you bring into the cockpit with you. And we know the I'm safe checklist, we know what it all means, but sometimes our emotions can get the best of us with things. As we listen to this unfold and the ATC uh, audio recording that we hear, I want you to listen for a few things now that you know this scenario. I want you to listen for really two things. How many runway changes, for starters? So take a little tallies. How many times do the controllers change the runway for this airplane? And then how many different voices 
do you hear throughout this animation as well? You'll hear different controllers, you'll hear the supervisor step in, you'll hear controllers kind of shift around, you'll hear all these things happen. And then I want you to listen for how many times you hear the word unable. You see, the word unable is a very, very powerful word to use. And it's something that should pop up in your uh, pilot controller glossary relatively soon. So when you listen to those three things, how many runway changes? How many different voices do you hear in, in the control tower at that time? How many times do you hear the word unable said? Other things, listen for things like what the winds are doing and what runway they have us land and everything else. Anyways, I'll stop rambling. Let's go ahead and let's play the animation. Sorry, is that Sirius 425 here, Gulf? Sirius 4252 Gulf Hobby Tower, you number two, following a 737 on a three mile final. Cautious turbulence from me, four clear to land. November uh, 52 Gulf, what did the approach tell you before? Proceed direct to the numbers for runway four. Direct to Hobby. Sirius 52 Gulf, maintain maximum four to the speed of fable and, and uh, just proceed direct to the numbers. The uh, 737 is on a nine mile final, following you with an 80 knot overtake. Sirius 52 Gulf, Tower. 452 Gulf. Yeah, I got traffic behind you. Just uh, go around and uh, fly runway heading now. Uh, maintain VFR I'm to put you back in a downwind from a 35. Uh, the winds are 09 or 0 at 13, gust 18. Can you accept 235? We'll do go around and line up to runway 35, downwind. Or 5 to go. I'll fly runway heading from a 4 for right now. We'll fly runway heading for 4. We'll just fly to go. Silas 235, runway 4, clear to land number 1. Clear to land uh, number 1, put the 235 on my for 5-2 uh, Golf, when able, uh, go ahead and make a right downwind now for runway 3-5, and then we'll just go ahead and keep that right turn, runway 3-5, clear to land. 737 on 5-mile final, this is runway 4, and you're going to be in front of him. 4-2-5-2 Golf, turning around for runway 3-5. Okay, 5-2 Golf, yeah, let's just uh, just enter the right downwind for runway 3-5. Right downwind 35, 4 2 5 2 Golf. 5 2 Golf, I'll call your right base now. Sirius 5 2 Golf, 737, that's your uh, 2 o'clock and 3 miles at 900 feet inbound from report. Advise that traffic in sight. I have traffic in sight, 4 2 5 2 Golf. 4 5 2 Golf, make a right base behind that traffic, runway 3 5, clear to land. You're going to be following them. They're going to be a landing crossing or a new party arrival. We'll make a right base following them, 4252 Golf for 35. Papa 3564, Sears traffic ahead into your right head inside. It's going to make a right base behind you, landing cross and runway behind you. Papa 3564. Sears 52 Golf, make a turn left heading 30 degrees. Left heading 30 degrees, 4252 Golf. 52 Golf, did you want to follow the 737 to runway 4? Yes, that would be great. 452 Golf. 52 Golf, Roger. Follow the 737 and to runway 4, clear to land. So am I turning a right base now, 452 Golf? 52 Golf, Roger. Just uh, maneuver back for the straight end. I don't know which way you're going now, so just turn back around to runway 35. Turning to 35. I'm so sorry for the confusion. 452 Golf. That's okay. We'll get it. Tower team is 350 Golf Alpha Visual Runway 4 parking at the gas station in the road. 350 Golf Alpha Alpha Tower, Roger, continue. Okay, yeah, that's fine. 52 Golf, uh, just make it uh, so you're in a right turn. Keep it tight. I need you to make it tight. Keeping turn tight, 452 Golf. 0 Golf Alpha, traffic alert, heading to your right in 1 mile, 900 feet. 0 Golf Alpha, looking. For 52 Golf, I need you to, okay, there you go, straight into runway 35, clear to land. Straight into 35, clear to land, and I don't believe I'm lined up for that. 4252 Golf. Okay, 52 Golf, Roger, turn to the right and climb, maintain 1,600, right turn. 1,600, right turn, 4252 Golf. 52 Golf, yes, ma'am, heading about 040. 040, 4252 Golf. Okay, 5-2 Golf, let's do this. Can you do a right turn back to join the straight end to 3-5? Could you do it like that? 
Yes, right turn back to 35452 golf. 35 golf. Okay, so you're just going to make a right turn all the way around to runway 35, and now you're clear to land. 35, clear to land, 4252 golf. Thank you. Clear to land. Uh, number two, the airport. Traffic's is serious. Uh, rolling on about a mile fine on runway 35. All right, we'll slow it down. Okay, great. Here's 52 Golf. Okay, you're looking good. Just continue a right turn uh, for runway 35. Do you see runway 35 still? Yes, 35. 4252 Golf. Have it in sight. Continue my roll around. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're good. So you can start your descent to runway 35 there and uh, clear to land on 35. Clear to land 35. 4252 Golf. Thank you very much. No problems. Uh, winds are one zero zero at one zero. I'm sorry. Winds are one zero zero at one five. Gust to two zero. Number five two golf. Uh, if you don't want to land, that's too high. We can put you back around the downwind. Don't force it if you can't. Okay, we'll see. Thank you. Four two five two golf. I think you're too high, Sirius. Uh, five, oh, two, no. five two golf. You might be too high. Okay, well, it could go around then. 452 Golf. 52 Golf, Roger. Just, uh, okay, just, you're just going to make a right traffic now for runway 35. We'll come back around and we got it this time. Traffic to 52 Golf, uh, make right down into runway 35, and you are clear to land. There'll be uh, no other traffic for runway 4, so this one will be easy. Five to golf affirmative and clear to land on runway three five via the right down and right base. Five to golf and there's a seven thirty seven on short final runway four touching down right front of you, so just caution way turbulence right there at that intersection. Okay, I got that in sight, thank you. Four two five to golf. Way three five in sight. Four two five to golf. Five to golf winds zero nine or zero at one three, gust one eight, runway three five again, clear to land. 35 clear to land, trying to get down again for 252 golf. No problem. Okay, uh, serious stuff, 52 golf. Just go ahead and make the left turn now to enter the uh, downwind, midfield downwind for only four. If you can, just keep me a nice low, tight pattern. I'm going to have traffic four miles behind you, so I need you to just kind of keep it in tight if you could. And actually, I might end up sequencing you behind that traffic. It's on four miles a minute. Um, it is going to be a little bit tight with the uh, one behind it. So uh, when you get on that downwind, stay on the downwind. Advise me when you have that 737 in sight. We'll either do four or we might swing you around to three, five. But, uh, uh, ma'am, ma'am, uh, straighten up, straighten up. I hate talking about aviation accidents, but this one illustrates it. You, can you see how radio communications added to the links in the chain of events of this accident? That last radio communication you heard, 23 seconds in length about the turn, keep it tight and everything else that led to her making a rush to go around, taking out all the flaps at once, uh, under, under 60 knots, and you don't take all the flaps out all at once, under 60 knots in a Cirrus too low to pull the chute, and, and, and just, you see how these things all compound, the winds, everything else. By the way, how many runway changes did you, did you hear? Put it in the chat for me. How many, how many different voices did you hear? And then how many times did you hear the word unable? I didn't hear the word unable. I heard, I think we can make it work, and, and I heard these sort of phrases, and it's so interesting, if you read the NTSB report, in the summary, it, all, it talks about the causal factors, and one of the factors was lack of pilot assertiveness. And I read NTSB reports for a living, and I've never read lack of pilot assertiveness from just stepping up and saying, unable, hey, this isn't right. Not, we're gonna get you in this time, we're gonna make this work, all these things. You had uh, the go arounds, we get flustered, it's so easy to fall behind the airplane. So let me ask you this, how can you help me change the script? How could we change this script if we really wanted to? Well, it could be, does 
Does Houston have an executive airport we can fly into instead, use a Uber or a crew car or just something else to get to where we need to go, drive instead, airline instead? Like there's a lot of ways. Let me know, I wanna know in the comments below this video, how would you have changed the script in this situation as well? And how can we learn and how can we better ourselves in radio communications? It starts with realizing what 91.3 really means is that we need to step up as pilots and exercise our responsibility with everything and use words like unable. It also means important things though too, like we need to start listening early. Start listening early. I don't care if you're flying into a pilot controlled airport and that's my, that's my buzzword for uncontrolled airports. I don't like saying uncontrolled airports because news reporters will say, there was a crash at an uncontrolled airport. There was no control tower. I think it's very much controlled. It's just controlled by us, the pilots. It's a pilot controlled. The airspace is uncontrolled, but we've got control of what we're doing. Right, and we'll talk about that in a second. But we can start listening early, going into a towered field or going into these pilot controlled airports to see how do I fit in the ecosystem? What is happening there? Maybe there is a gear up, maybe there's a pilot who's struggling, maybe whatever it may be, start listening early to think about these things. And then when it's my turn to make my radio calls, the goal is always to keep my radio calls very clear and very concise. Very clear, very concise in all my radio calls. And we'll be talking about that at the live stream at the end of this month as well and diving into some new, uh, just some new ways I have to practice and work through our radio communications as well. You might say, Jason, it's so easy. Keep them clear and concise. But hey, I go to pilot controlled airports, Jason, not everybody follows the rules. And, and I get that, not everybody follows the rules. In fact, if you look at the aim, if everybody followed what the aim says, the world would be a better place, right? In the aim, uh, we learned down here in subparagraph B, arriving aircraft should be at the appropriate traffic pattern altitude before entering the traffic pattern. Entry to the downwind leg should be at a 45 degree angle of beam the midpoint of the runway. And I know if everybody made the 45 degree to left downwind entry, the world would be a safer place, wouldn't it? You say, well, Jason, that's the aim. That's why they just, they, it's not regulatory. They can't make it. But there are regs that talk about our traffic patterns. Look at 91126. Operating on or in the vicinity of an airport in Class G airspace. Paragraph A, general. Unless otherwise authorized or required, each person operating an aircraft on or in the vicinity of an airport in Class G airspace must comply with the requirements of this section. B, direction of turns. When approaching to land at an airport without an operating control tower in Class G airspace, each pilot of an airplane must make all turns of that airplane to the left, unless the airport displays approved light signals or visual markings indicating that turns should be made to the right, in which case the pilot must make all turns to the right. And it talks about powered parachutes and helicopters after that. And I realize that slide breaks every rule of keynote. I apologize. It's just so important to be able to show all of that to you. So now we know, okay, there's some regulations and there's some good recommendations on how to enter and how to interact in the traffic pattern. And that guy or gal who cuts you off by making a right base, they're breaking regulations, right? It's left traffic at this airport. We're supposed to follow that. It's 91126. It is truly regulatory now. Might make you think about making that right base next time, right? So just something else to ponder. Now, also in the towered and the pilot controlled environment, I'm always asking myself the following questions here. I'm always trying to ask the right questions. Where is my place in the traffic pattern for starters? Where is my place in the pattern? Example, I'm on the downwind, but there's a guy or a gal uh, behind me on crosswind and they're in a Mooney and I'm in 2-3 Mike Zulu. Do you see the problem? I have my place in the pattern, but this guy or gal is gonna be eating my lunch here pretty soon. Or I, the other way around. I'm in the Mooney on downwind and there's just a little Cessna 150 on base. I'm thinking, all right, they've got the right of way. I need to slow up, extend my pattern out. Where is my place in the traffic pattern? The next question I'm always asking myself is, who am I following, right? What's the speed of that aircraft? Third question, am I faster or slower than that aircraft as well? So it helps me understand the ecosystem. And then lastly, is someone overtaking me or someone converging on me? 
This makes me think to flying into Oshkosh when we, when we got to do that before COVID, right? Flying into an event like Oshkosh, you're just trying to maintain your spot, not get overtaken, and everyone else's prop wash and everything else, it, it adds to it. But when you ask yourselves these questions, it causes you to come up with some very smart answers in the traffic pattern. And if we can educate pilots, flight instructors pay attention, if we can educate our learners to be asking these questions about where do they fit in this ecosystem called the airport, are they fast or slow or converging? Are they overtaking? What's happening? And understand that, hey, uh, an SR-22 is faster than a Piper Archer. And just understand these basic things. It can all make us all safer in the traffic patterns. And of course, too, we all fly standard patterns, not the bomber patterns, not tight you know, helicopter patterns either. We have to make that really work. So again, this all sounds good in theory, and we'll practice this really throughout the year in the airplane on some great webinar live streams here together. But how does this relate? What about something like flight following as well? You know, I'm a huge advocate of flight following, and it's world famous Jamie Beckett, who you saw on In Flight Coffee for our one year, 52 episodes of In Flight Coffee. We do that Saturdays at one. You can always watch it on Facebook. Jamie Beckett joined us, and I always quote Jamie Beckett, and, and Magda, my, my lady who you know from so many great radio communications videos as well, she always says, you always have to have a notebook when you're around Jamie Beckett, because he always drops so much wisdom. And some of that wisdom Jamie dropped many, many years ago to me was, Jason, flight following is easy. It's like ordering a pizza. So what do you mean flight following is like ordering pizza? I like pizza, so I think I can handle this, right? He says, it's like when you order a pizza, what do you say? Who am I? Where am I? And what do I want? That's how we order pizza. Flight following is exactly the same. Let's look at the following script here. I teach the cold call for starters. Jack's approach, Skyhawk, 2-3 Mike Zulu. And I wait. Let them come back to me. I realize a cold call doesn't always work in every environment. Some places, LAX, New York, you're just super busy. You just got to step in and take charge, right? Some assertiveness in there, some 91-3 in there as well. But usually, I like to cold call. Then I go into my script. Who am I? 2-3 Mike Zulu. Where am I? 10 miles southwest of MCO at 2,500 feet. What do I want? VFR flight following to Ocala. When you have that script of who am I, where am I, and what do I want, flight following is no different than ordering pizza. It's actually pretty simple when you look at it. Now, I know I had a big, lengthy presentation plan. I wanted to dive into IFR and everything else. I promise I'll do that for the live stream at the end of this month. But before we get to that live stream, we have the M0A birthday, please don't forget, April 15th. Head over to m0alive.com uh, to go ahead and RSVP and reserve your spot. We're going to share a ton about M0A, uh, about where we're going, and of course, always just that great educational component. It'll be a virtual birthday party, anniversary party, whatever we want to call it. It's going to be a good time, that is for sure. m0alive.com to check that out and learn more. But M0A Nation, you are such a blessing to us. If we can help or you have more questions about radio communications, leave me a comment below. This is interactive. Myself and the entire team here at M0A.com, we read every single comment. So uh, it will not fall on deaf ears. Leave us a comment below. I can't wait to read what you are up to. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.